What's going on everybody? Nick DiVirgilio here in Detroit, Michigan at the Little Caesars Arena. It's the Phil Collins concert tonight and I'm up here to do an interview with Nick Collins. That's Phil Collins' son who's playing drums for him. He's been playing drums for a couple of tours now. He's a great young kid, playing his butt off and we're gonna have a really good conversation about touring with Phil Collins, his dad, and the gear he's playing. Let's go. I'm hanging out with Nick Collins. Yep. How's it going, man? Good, and you? Fantastic. Thank you so much for having us here, man. We are at Little Caesars Arena up in Detroit for the Phil Collins Show, and Nick plays drums for your father, Phil Collins. I do. That's awesome, man. Yeah, it's uh, just good fun. It's a good gig, and you know, it's good to kind of be out here not only because it's a great show, but also just because you know it is my dad, and it's nice to kind of see him doing what he's supposed to be doing. <laughs> you know? I understand completely. And I've been a fan for since for my whole life, really, mm -hmm. listening to your dad's music. Now, playing for your father, I'm sure, you know, we'll talk about the gear. We're going to talk about all kinds of stuff today. All these fantastic Gretsch drums, the Sabian cymbals and everything that Nick plays. And you have a band down in Miami. So yep. let's talk, we'll get into all that kind of stuff. But playing for your father, and you said you started this gig when you were 16. You're I 18 did. now. Yep. So what was... Is there pressure involved playing for your dad, who is a world-class, yeah. world, you know, drummer? I mean, drummer? at first, like, it started off, we were doing a few charity shows for the foundation that my parents have um, called Little Dreams Foundation. And, and it was just kind of like a last-minute thing. And it was only, right. like, three songs. And I would, you know, fill in, just, you know, yeah. play the drums for him. Um, and that, you know, started happening a bit more often. And we did the U.S. Open. And then after that, he kind of was like, hey, you know, I'm thinking about going back on tour. And if I would want to do it with him which at the time, I was like, oh, my God, yeah. And I was a bit freaked out at the beginning okay. just because, you know, it's a, it's a big gig and, sure. and it's different than just playing four songs with him. It's like, you know, playing the whole thing. Um, but honestly, it, it was, you know, we were talking about it earlier, just with all the guys and all the musicians, like I've known them since I'm a baby. Sure. And I've grown up with them. And, and so it was really easy coming in. Everybody was just yeah, super cool. Yeah, they already knew you. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like, it's like family and, and, and it was really easy to kind of step in. And also I think that um, it was much easier for me to, to be able to, to step in just because, you know, I've known the music my whole life. Sure. It wasn't a question of going and listening to everything and learning all the parts as I knew the majority of, of, of everything already, which was great. And um, obviously over time, like when I was 16, it was just, you know, a bit more of a kind of just a lot more pressure just because I was just so young and I hadn't done that kind of thing. And, and now it's just, this is just kind of like, it's become a machine, you know, it just, starts and then it and it just keeps going There's yeah you got to start somewhere right exactly yeah, totally. yeah. so we're, let's step back a little bit when did you start playing drums i've been playing drums for as long as i can remember okay. like you know i mean i it's kind of like the corny cheesy answer well, that's, but, yeah. but I, I i actually you know i don't remember a time where i i didn't play drums i think you know there's like home videos of my dad you know putting me on his lap and and playing you know as soon as i came back from the hospital after being born so I, it was just always kind of uh just always there but it was never kind of pushed upon me. Oh, that was just going to ask you. Yeah. Something you wanted to do. Yeah, exactly. Like, of course, like, you know, it, it goes without saying, he was kind of like, oh, you know, drums and all that. But he never kind of sat me down and gave me a lesson. He never was kind of like, you're going to play drums. It was very much, I kind of, I kind of just, you know, navigated towards mm -hmm. it by myself. And, and even to this day, like, he's never been the kind of guy that's just going to go and give me lessons and tell me what to do. Obviously, on this gig, it's different because well, you know, yeah, he's, you it's his, play it's some his specific show. things, yeah, of course. Exactly. Yeah. But um, he's always just been really kind of open on me just doing kind of my own thing and finding my own way yeah, sure. as a drummer, which I think is great with anybody who, you know, with any, you know, there's a lot of drummers nowadays who, are, you know, their dads were drummers. And, and I think it's just, it's really good and it's be beneficial to them when they're able to kind of learn and just do it by themselves. Yeah. So did you... Uh, Growing up and playing, did you study at all? Did you have drum teachers, or how did you how did you learn how to play? Um, well, like I learned how to play. It was pretty. I didn't have like a teacher at, at the beginning. It was just kind of a, a thing that I just did. Okay. Um, but I think it wasn't until I moved to Miami in like 2012, I think, that I kind of realized I wanted to play drums. That like you know for the rest of my life, it wasn't just a hobby. Right. Um, and that's when I kind of like you know I, I had I have a drum teacher back in in Miami um, called uh, John Pierre Spiritosanto. He 
he's a great drummer and he you know he, we kind of had to you know going from i just play drums normally to wanting you know i want to do drums full right, time getting in deep yeah and then it's just you know as far as technique and all that stuff goes so you know after that it was you know a lot of drum lessons and 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 a lot of refining i guess my te- my sure. technique and um but but i also i i but i've never been the kind of guy that's like you know, I need to read the sheet music and I got to do all the, the lessons because although I, I do like that kind of part of of, of, of kind of learning is having other people show you stuff that you may not be too familiar with. Yeah. I also think that with any instrument, what kind of makes, I guess, a musician, um, a good musician and kind of find their own identity is doing it themselves sure. and doing what they kind of want to do. And if it sucks, it sucks. But if it, you know, if it's good, you kind of, that's how you learn. I mean, even with other instruments where it's you know not relying on on other people telling you what to do and right. kind of figuring it out yourself. That's cool. That's very yeah. good. So, what kind of music uh, aside from your dad's music and what he was doing? What did you grow up liking? What was what was what was um, your influences as far as that's concerned? Well, yeah, I mean, well, like when I was a kid, it was you know it was a lot of of, of my dad's music, just cause obviously being on the road and sure. and it, it just was that. But I kind of you know a lot of just I, I'm a rock guy and and so that's yeah. just kind of what I I am. You know, looking back in the day, I mean, I was you know listening to bands like the zeppelins and the sabbaths and, and all right. that stuff sure. and, and now it's just kind of um now i've just kind of got a bigger i guess um i don't know like a bigger source of influence from from a bunch of different types of music um obviously it's not just this sure you know and and um but mainly i guess rock stuff and and funk and 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 on, on all that uh, but growing up it was just it was weird like I wouldn't have that much of an interest in like different kinds of music it wasn't until you know I grew up and I would, you know now it's like you know looking for other sure. bands and new things it's just yeah I think I we're all that we're all exactly. sort of that way yeah you bet yeah um do you get influenced by the the, the musicianship in Miami in southern Florida because there's a lot of amazing musicians yeah. down that style of Cuban Afro-Cuban music down there is you know obviously huge is that that get ingrained in you at all yeah just I by mean, living there yeah, with well, with the drum teacher, a lot of the stuff that we were doing at first was really independence, and that came from all the Latin s- right. stuff, you know, the bossa novas and, and and the samba, whatever, yeah. and and that was really helpful as far as like independence goes sure. for for your limbs, and yeah. um, I mean musically, it's definitely there, and I think it's um, more of a subconscious thing, like even with my music, like it's more of a, you know, you're aware of it and you like it but it's not necessarily oh let's put that in you know and it's not like a direct right. influence but i feel like it's a more of a kind of you know subliminal kind of thing sure so how much do you play normally do you are you practicing a lot well keeping in shape i mean you're playing a lot yeah on the road so what do you have to do before gigs so on tour obviously i, I mean i don't obviously we have at the hotel i don't right. play but um here obviously every night um but i have a pretty serious you know warm-up routine you do? okay before um, pretty lengthy, like 45 minute to like an hour warm up before shows. And then at home, it's, you know, every day. And, but also I, 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 I tend not to kind of be like, oh, you know, it's three o'clock. I got to go do 15 minutes of rudiments, you right. know, like right. it's, it's, it's more kind of, I, you, there's a fine line between keeping it as like a chore and then making it, you know, when yeah, you want to do it. And, right. and, and, and that's what I feel is kind of what, what I tend to do. But, it, you know, I play every day. And um, I'm always trying like new stuff and, and trying to incorporate different stuff into my playing. Very but cool. when you know when you're on this show, it's um, you know it's you've got the part and and like I said, you know it's a machine and just right. kind of goes. And um, so on, you know it depends. Like back home, I have more freedom to do whatever I want. Sure. And, but here, it's obviously you're playing a you know you're playing a show and people are coming to see the songs. So they're not they're not coming here to see your interpretation. Totally. You know <laughs> your understand. Latin yeah. interpretation right. of uh, yeah. <laughs> one of the one of the songs. Right. Okay. Well, and then we're going to definitely get into the gear and stuff. But you mentioned that you have your own band back down in yeah. Miami. So let's tell the folks what your band is and the name. Yeah, and what my, you're ba- my band back down in Miami, uh, 5800, we're a, we're a rock band, I guess. I would just consider it rock at this point. Okay. We veer from having hard rock influences to alternative influences. Right. Zeppelin, uh, Foo Fighters, Smashing Pumpkins, Chili Peppers, Royal Blood, whatever. And um, yeah, so we, we're, um, we're working back in... Um, in, in, in Miami, we're constantly writing and recording some new music yeah. and playing shows. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's really cool. And I've been in that, ba- I started that band with the bassist. Okay. Um, and we've just been in, you know, doing that for like four or five years. And we're still, you know, we're still, still young. And it's been cool to kind of see the progression as, 
you know, we started it when we were freshmen in high school. You know, we've definitely got some, we're on, you know, we've, we've got some music out, but we've got, definitely got more music out coming um, really soon. And Good. yeah, it's, 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 and, and it's cool. Like I said, you know, going back to like my dad and what I like about that band and how I mentioned before, it, it's not kind of like using the kind of, you know, name like, oh, Phil Collins, the Sun to go right. do shows. It's very much a homegrown thing. And it's been, it's been really cool. And, I, and it's a kind of, um, just a project that I'm really proud of. And, you know, something that obviously I kind of, the goal would be to kind of be touring and, 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 yeah, eventually, and, yeah, sure. and, and doing stuff like that. But it's been really cool. Yeah. That's great. Well, congrats. And oh, uh, thank we'll do, you. I hope to check it out very soon. Yeah. So Sweetwater is a gear place. We sell mm -hmm. everything under the sun. Yes. We're huge in the drum community now. So let's talk about your gear. Yep. Um, Gretsch USA custom kit. Now your dad's been playing Gretsch for many years. Yep. Other brands before that, obviously, but this is sort of like a quintessential Phil Collins looking drum kit. Exactly. We were talking before the interview that you didn't you don't normally play single headed drums, but what's it like playing concert toms like this? The feel of them. Yeah, I mean, honestly, with concert toms, obviously that was the drum, like those kinds of drums that I was playing when I first started doing this gig. And obviously it was always, always at home. Right. And weirdly, I'm better at tuning concert toms than I am at tuning actual drums just because I've kind of grown up with it. The resonance not there, yeah. Yeah, and I've just been able to kind of dial in the sound. Okay. So this is like a completely different kit that, I mean, setup that I use uh, than, than the one I, that I use at home. Okay. Um, obviously, it's a pretty signature Phil Collins kit and it's, it's got the sound, you know, and I, um, the way it's set up, even though it looks, it looks like a pretty impossible to play and because sometimes it's just you know the way everything is set up it's mm -hmm. sometimes not um doesn't seem really comfortable which i can understand but <laughs> it's just sacrifices you got to make totally for, right? to, for the for, gig right yeah, exactly for the sound and, and you know the size and dimensions of the drums they just work in a certain way sure and um yeah i just it, it's just been one of those things where obviously even at home when i'm using a double-headed kit right um is that what you normally do? Like one rack tom, two yeah, floor toms? Yeah, two floors, but I'll have two concert toms like up high, just, okay. you know, just that kind of, just to put that kind of twist on it. And just because I love that sound, but for this gig, like I was talking to you before, there's just some songs where you can't, you can't play some of these songs with, right. with double-headed, sure. with a double-headed kit. It's just, you know, songs like In the Air Tonight or, um, you know, Don't Lose My Number. Right. Um, those are all songs that this is just kind of the... That's the sound. Exactly. And even like the dimensions, it's the same dimensions as he was using right. in like a small bass drum, which is not what I'm used to because right. typically I, I like big bass drums, like, you know, 24 inch, but this is a 20 inch. Right. I think it's a 20 by 16 or is it 18? I think 16. Okay. I think it's 16. Um, and, but it doesn't And the feel big open drum with the big exactly. hole, like not the little hole like you normally see on most exactly. times. Like the big open drum, he's been doing that for as long as I've seen him mm -hmm. play. So that, yeah. And it's also cool because the, the drum tech that I, that, that I have out here, Brad Marsh, who's been my dad's tech for 25, yeah, you know, 30 years or whatever. And, you know, his knowledge about it and he can set it up and tune it and it just, it just sounds like it should. Right. Like, you know, it, the, the sound, I guess. Sure. So now how hard is it? Cause you go, I, he, he was telling me you go eight, 10, 12, 15. Yep. 15, 16, 18. So what's it like playing those, those high rack toms above the hi hat there? Can you, are you able to, yeah. is it comfortable? I mean, the well, well now I've gotten used to it. Okay. And also, you know, like people kind of every single time there'll be a picture posted, it'd be like, man, he's, he's going to have back problems. You know, I've learned how to kind of play and adapt the kit to how right. I want it. This isn't exactly how it was set up when my dad was playing sure. it. Because he sat really low, I yeah, think, back in the day. I mean, right? I'm, you know, <laughs> seems very uncomfortable the way he was playing it. But um, honestly, sometimes when it's been a long time since I've come, you know, since I've been playing another kit and I come to this one, it takes a bit to get used to. Mm -hmm. But at this point, it's just I kind of know, right, you're comfortable, you know, what, exactly what to do. And, and we have it set up. That's why I come up here quite often, because with the, this amount of drums and the way it's set up, it's so easy to kind of get a bit, you know, out of place a little sure. bit. Sure. So that's why I have to come up and check just to make sure, you know, I, I, we've had one time where you go for the, you go for one of those high toms and it's right above the hi hat and you get cut, <laughs> you know, in, in your hand. But at this point, it's just kind of been, it's just comfortable. That's great. Yeah. Cool. Uh, lots of DW hardware around mm -hmm. the DW rack back in the day. Obviously he was using tripods and regular stands yeah. to put this all together. You were saying the rack makes life a lot yeah. easier for I, you. I, like I told you, I have the tripods. I mean, all, all the different stands at home and we were using them you know, before we started the tour when we were doing all those other shows. And it's just, it's just such a pain 
to set up for this kind of kit where sure. there's there's too many things that have to be at the perfect angle sure and when it's on a rack it's just it's always in the right place at the same time perfect and much easier to kind of move around right especially since there's since there's so many things there's not a lot of there wouldn't be a lot of space on the ground to kind of put sure. all the stands so it just you, you allows you to kind of move stuff a bit closer or nice however you want yeah uh, saving symbols that's mm -hmm. obviously been a, sign a signature sound of your dad's for a long time too yeah. so uh what are you using what do you like about the sabian i mean i i love i like their i mean the main thing that i love about sabian is the variety of right. symbols I, you know like i'm always there's always different symbol setups on each leg and even at home i use completely different symbols okay. on this gig we've been using uh the artisan symbols gorgeous yeah Beautiful. um it starts i think that's a 16 then 19 19 20 then a 22 inch 20 i think it's 21 inch ride and then the 21 inch AA Holy China, okay. which is, that's probably one of my favorite symbols. That's one of, of their signature time. symbols too. They've I, had I, that forever, yeah. I love that symbol. And, um, and then we're using HHX Accelerator Hi-Hats, 14 inches, which, you know, like I said with Sabian, it, it's just how I can just try different things and all their symbols are great. And, I, and they all, they're honestly durable to, because especially I'm a hard hitting drummer and, and the worst is, you know, symbols that Breaking are constantly, yeah. like constantly you're not reliable. And then back there, we've got two little 10 inch ozone splashes, okay. which are just kind of, they, like I said, there's just, it's just every leg we're kind of adding different things. Just, sure. you know, I'll be like, hey, you know, what? I feel like adding enough, another symbol because right. we've got an extra <laughs> hardware piece, so I can just put it there. Well, I just got to play the HHX Complex Thins. They just released these. So if you get a chance to play those symbols, they're killer. I just really? did a video on them. They're absolutely awesome. Dark. They have a nice yeah. dark thing. Yeah, I love dark symbols. Boy, Obviously, they're, these are bright. They're killer. They I, work for this I highly show. recommend those symbols. They're nice. <laughs> Cool. So, uh, uh, single pedal. Obviously, what are you using for your kick drum pedal? Uh, DW9000. Okay, and same for the hi-hat, yeah? Yep. Cool. Yeah, single pedal just because, I mean, I've kind of now just gotten, just, I only use a single. I very rarely use a double pedal. I was using one, um, but I, I'm one of those guys who's kind of like, if you're not playing metal music, you don't yeah, need a double cool. pedal kind of thing. Hey, and listen, I mean, your dad I had one of the, the greatest right, well, left foots mm -hmm. of any. I mean, he was fast, yeah. sort of than that John Bonham thing. He could do a ton of stuff with a single kick yeah. drum pedal back. In yeah, and, and which is great, honestly, with this small bass drum, you just can start going. You, yeah, you fly. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun to play. But even at home with a bigger bass drum, I'm always using just one pedal. Because, you know, like John Bonham, I'm like listening to all those tracks. I'm like, if John Bonham can do it, there's no reason why I should be using a double pedal. There you go. I kind of came to that realization a okay. few years ago. I was like, you know what? And you don't need it on this gig very much. Oh, you? exactly. Yeah. 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 And it's, yeah, it's not that kind of, that kind of show. Cool. So I'm just one pedal kind of guy. Nice. <laughs> now I see you also have some triggers going on. We do. For a few things. So what are you triggering during the show? Just we well right now. Are you using, well, should I say you're using it a lot or just sparingly throughout the show? No, it's only on one song, the oh. triggers, because okay. I mean, luckily with this kit, it's, I mean, obviously front of house, they do a lot of stuff to it, but right. with this kit, you don't really need triggers. A lot of the sound, it's just, that's the kit okay. and, and the kit does the magic, I guess. Okay. But we, you know, we, there's invisible touch that we have in the set that needs triggers because it's got a Simmons sound. Okay. So we're using uh, just roll in triggers okay. um, that are connected to like a T uh, TM6. Right. And um, we do have a KT10 spare pedal, um, which, you know, doesn't trigger anything at the moment. It's just, a spare kick okay in case things Something go happens, wrong with yeah. this one that's cool because yeah. we've only got one we've had we last last leg we had uh the bass drum snap in half and all of a sudden i didn't have a bass drum oh my gosh for for you know 40 seconds so now we've got that just to kind of foolproof it um but we're, you know we're not doing a lot of triggers we do i do have the spdx pad okay. that we are using we were using on songs like one more night and songs like can't turn back the years which we aren't doing this leg but um you know i just kind of have 808 sounds that's on that yeah. And um, which is which is cool, just to kind of it's a different part of the yeah, different game. way of thinking. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Nice. Well, we're gonna go back and check out the kit from behind here in just a second, kind of get some of the bells cool. and whistles, and be great to hear you play a little bit if that's even possible. Yeah, Maybe yeah, yeah. Go tweak it out. Nick, I'm curious what you listen to in your in-ears for, for, for this gig. Um, I typically have kind of a bit of everything. Right. Um, you know, 
The majority of what's in my ears is keyboards, bass, uh, lead guitar, and vocals. And I, I mean, obviously percussion on certain songs, like we have like a drum duet, which I need a lot of percussion on, obviously. Um, and everything else is kind of, it, it's mixed in there. I mean, like I like to hear everything. I don't like to just have two things in my ears. Um, but like I said, the you know, keys, bass, lead guitar, and vocals are like the highest things in my mix. And drums are obviously there a little bit. Um, not so much like the toms, more so like, you know, a bit of overhead and kick, snare, and hat. And um, obviously we have drum loops on, you know, like I guess the drum machine parts, like In the Air Tonight, Su Studio, throwing it all away, which are, you know, blasted in my ears because, you know, I have to be perfectly. So no click track, just the drum loop you're No, yeah, to. there's no, I mean, I have a click back here for certain songs just to, you know, start it off, get a feel for it, turn it off, and then start it. Okay. Um, or even play with it for a little bit, but there's no click track for, you know, the, uh, for, the, for the actual songs. It's more, you know, we've got the drum loops and, and that's it. Very cool. And I was just listening to you play for a little bit, man. The drums sound great, but they're, they got a really fat, warm sound, especially that little kick drum. It's, yeah. it's beefy. Oh, and it's great. And I've got the Porter and Davies drum throne. Which, which are just amazing, just, yeah. You know, it's 20 inch, but it kind of, it just feels massive, which is great. I mean, when, when you're at home and you've got the 20 inch and you don't have all the sub stuff, it kind of gets a bit like, you know, really, but like with this, it's just, it's really massive, especially when, you know, front of house is, is going. I think those are the best drum thrones ever made. Yeah, they're great. They're yeah. awesome. Cool. And what kind of heads are you using? Obviously, Remo's, but what's ambassadors all around? Um, so or does it change? There's a diplomat on the first one. Okay. Just because that's like the high, you know, okay. you know, and I have, I used to have the diplomat on the 10 as well, but I use I use it more than I used to, so okay. diplomats just aren't durable enough. So we have ambassadors on the 10, 12, 15, 16, 18. We have an ambassador X on the snare drum, um, and then an ambassador smooth white on the kick, and then a side snare, which is like a 13 inch hand hammered chrome, which is just has an, a regular ambassador on okay. it. Um, but like the same, you know, same thing with Sabin Remo. I love the variety that they have. Like I have different heads on different kits you know, for everything, you right. know, back home, I'm more of like an emperor or, you know, CS black dot kind of guy right. rather than, but like I said, this is very much like, it's got the sound and the ambassador heads cause they're thin. And it's like, yeah, they may not be as durable, but like if you start putting pinstripes or emperors on these kinds of drums, yeah, they it just, kills the sound. Yeah, they lose that kind of bright, you know, attack that, they, that sure. these have. And what size Promark sticks are you using? Your dad's sticks? You have your own thing? No, I have my own, which is kind of based off of 5. I mean, it's kind of a standard kind of based off of 5A. I just have a little bit more um, weight right. added to it. And I was using my dad's stick like b back in the day, but, you know, he's classic. He's got like the really short, right. you know, sticks. And, and, and they are cool, but I just feel more comfortable That's with, cool. with, yeah. with these. But yeah, they're just, you know, Promark. There's nothing kind of special to it. It's kind of, it's just like, I guess, a heavier model of a 5a i guess thanks so much for having you know the chat on stage i'm really looking forward to seeing the show tonight it's been a long time since i've seen your, yeah. your dad play it's a great show, i know yeah. some of the i have a history with some of the people in the band too that's cool mm -hmm. and uh it's be nice to catch up with everybody but just thanks again good luck to your own band and your own music i wish you all the best for that and please come to sweetwater anytime you want to come to fort wayne and it's a great place to come and we'd love to have you there anytime absolutely man thank you cool, very man. much awesome cool thanks for watching everybody